What's up everybody? It's been a while since I've done a mediocre video as opposed to a mediocre slideshow ramble. So here we are. Um, this is going to be talking about the Age of Darkness box set for Warhammer The Horse Heresy. It's going to be a glimpse into the box set, not a full unboxing. There's lots of stuff in here. I believe everything including the Spartan tank is available for purchase separately now, although I, I don't remember the Spartan tank 100% if it is or not, but everything else is outside of maybe the Praetors. But we'll look at the back to see what everything includes. We'll flip it over to see the front. I'll open it up. We'll look at a couple of sprue. And then I'll go over my plan of attack for the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness box set slash Horus Heresy collecting for me. Because as I mentioned in a previous ramble, I'm going to be doing two legions for the stuff that I have for the Horus Heresy time period. <clears throat> On top of doing a DIY post Heresy Primaris Horus Purely chapter. And now I'm thinking my Dark Angels that I have for post Heresy are going to be a mix um, of maybe some Primaris support with all the Firstborn stuff. But anyways. With that said, first I want to go over this little token set for the Horus Heresy. You get the cards, so you have Interceptor right as a card, and then you have tokens, and there is an Interceptor token right there. And there's the back of it, looks pretty cool. Very nice token set, I approve, I think those are pretty cool. But the meat and potatoes is this box set, this huge box set. You get 54 models. Um, when you look at it, you get Cataphracty Terminators, you get Mark VI uh, Power Armor Dudes, a decent amount of them. I want to say 30, although it could be mistaken, it could be uh, maybe a little, I don't know exactly the, the exact number, but uh, I think it says it right here. You get 40 Mark VI, my bad. So anyway, you get one Contemptor Dreadnought, one Spartan Assault Tank, two Praetors. 10 Cataphracty, which is two boxes, if you were to buy them separately, um, and 40 Mark VI. So that is a lot of stuff. Now, as shown here, Sons of Horus and Imperial Fist, and I believe the decals are specifically for them, but you can, of course, paint it up as any Legion, any chapter even. If you wanted just to buy this to bulk out your Minotaurs or to bulk out your Caradon's Astro or whomever else, totally could, right? Anyways, with that said, um, <clears throat> why am I even looking at this? Like I said, it's been, I don't know if I said this, it's been out for a while. Uh, I got this back when it first came out, pre-ordered it, got it, whatever else, just have it open until now. Well, if you're newer, you can still purchase this. And even if you don't plan to do the Horse Heresy 2.0 gaming, really, of which the rules are in here as well, you get the rules, templates, dice, some dice and uh, decals if you're going to do either of these two legions. Um, even if this isn't necessarily your bag, but you like the look of the stuff in here, you could easily purchase this for 40k force. And right from the get-go, I can say it is a worthwhile purchase for what's in here. So, being that everything in here is, oops, turn around and make a whole bunch of noise. Being that everything in here is purchasable on its own, I believe even the Spartan tank. We don't need to do a full unboxing. You easily look at the stuff online or whatever else. But I will show a couple of sprue. Um, what I like about this box set is that A, you can still purchase it, B, it's multi-part plastic kits. The Indominus box set which was a limited time deal, I have one, the quality in there is top notch, but they're snap fit. And there's nothing wrong with that. Snap fit used to mean, well, the quality is going to be okay, but the benefit is it's, you, it's easier to put together and typically those snap fit models the box set stuff is pretty, you get a decent amount of value, even if they're snap fit. Well, with the Indominus box set, the value is there, the quality is top notch and everything, but some people want an easier chance to kit bash and convert. And when they're snap fit, AKA clamshell style, they go together a very specific way, it's a bit hard to kit bash and convert outside of some very basic stuff. Well, these are multi-part plastic kits, so these are much easier to do. Helmet swaps. Shoulder pad swaps, weapon swaps, the works, right? Pretty straightforward and easy to do. Um, which is always good. So, with that said, you get some templates. If you remember the uh, older 40K editions, use templates, same style of templates. You get measuring sticks, these are classic. Um, don't whip your friends with them. <laughs> there are some dice on there, the rubble's on the very bottom, but we're not going to go all the way down there. Here you can see. This is the Cataphracty 
uh, kit, just like you would buy if you buy itself, it's fully multi-part plastic. This is the same kit you would get if you bought the second Terminator Squad from Forge World, because it uses that kit as the basis with some resin upgrades. Here is the Spartan tank. I'm using this to, to highlight GW's quality. I know people always see GW flax, say they suck, whatever else. It's got a, a big inflammatory player base, right? Um, but I always will say this about GW products when it comes to their plastic kits. Other companies have come a long way, for sure. So is GW. I mean, GW really does have some pretty top-notch kits. Like just this plastic sprue piece, this multi-tiered like layer cake almost style of vehicle bit, I think is impressive. Anyways, um, maybe I'm just easily impressed. So, there are your, this is part, that's part of the Spartan tank. These are the Apache Terminators. This is part of the, I do believe this is part of the Contemptor Dreadnought. And here we have the Praetors. Now the Praetor kits, I love this sword by the way, with this hollow interior. Just be careful clipping it. These can be a little brittle, a little fragile. I don't know if this one is, but I know that concept can be. If you look at this, um, here's the back of the torso and leg piece, and here's the front. It's the, it's the most clamshell stuff, right? So the Praetors are a lot like HQ blisters, in which they're meant to go together, blister pack HQs that are plastic, like the interrogator chaplain and whatnot. They are meant to go together and fit in a very specific way. So these are probably going to be the hardest to kit bash outside of helmet conversions and maybe a weapon swap depending upon the, the weapon. Probably not this guy with the axe. But outside of, the va outside of these two things, the rest of the stuff are basic multi-part plastic kits, which means the posing is a little more neutral. These guys being clamshell style are meant to go together a specific way for a very specific pose. But um, it's a trade-off, right? Either you get a bit more posability at the expense of, um, of uh, neutrality in, in its basic pose, or you have a very purpose-built way to go together, but making it harder to kit bash. But I think two of the 54 things being that way is a very fine trade-off. So that's just a glimpse into the Age of Darkness box that the rule book's on the very bottom. I think it's a great value. Uh, I did what I, when I bought it. I think that really can be disputed, truly. I'm not sure if any type of crazy price hikes have happened, but it's definitely a, a worthwhile purchase. Post-heresy or pre-heresy, depending upon, it all depends upon if you're going to make use, of course, of what's in here. If you're looking for a biker heavy force, this is not the, kit, uh, the, the box set for you, right? Obviously. But being multi-part plastic kits in here is the full shebang. It's not just meant to go together how you see it advertised. You could do melee heavy terminators or range heavy terminators it depends on your preference so that's cool now having said that i do have a plan of attack uh for this box set the first legion and the 15th the dark Angels and the thousand suns are the two legions i'm going to be collecting both uh pre-heresy style loyalist style uh since the thousand suns did eventually go trader right uh out of desperation you could say so i have a plan of attack so let's flip this back over so you can see the contents. Now, um, for my Thousand Suns term, uh, Terminator, my Thousand Suns Force for pre heresy is going to be very much a pre heresy and codice style of force. That set that um, the video series I have to redo, <laughs> but uh, anyways, so I plan to build it as it counts as Grey Knight's Force. I'm going to be building Granite Terminators and Granite Interceptor Squads, with, and the Interceptors are going to have Nemesis Force Falchions. I'm going to use the Occult Blades Upgrade Kit to represent the Interceptors, and I'm going to use Sethmate Terminators for my Grey Knight Terminators. Now, I might make a, I make a squad that's really like ornate and golden and way more so, you know, ornate looking, and make that a Paladin squad. I'm not sure, but it definitely will be just a standard Grey Knight Terminator squad. Now those, you buy as, I bought as kits, or I have as kits from Forge Roll. I got some as gifted, and I, I did believe I did buy one, maybe, I forget. I definitely got some gifted. Um, they come with the Cataphractic Plastic Kit and Resin Upgrades, so you do this. This is a work in progress of one. I have one fully finished, but it's in storage, so that's unfortunate. But anyways, um, 
you build part of it in plastic, basically the bottom half, you use one arm, you use the shoulder pads, and then you have the copash arm and the body as resin. And that means super glue for anything that's resin to resin, resin to plastic. I prefer plastic glue. I hate working with super glue personally because it never works out. Everybody else, you know, instantaneous bond, super strong hold, no problem. I do it and it never wants to stick. <laughs> but uh, it looks great though. But they come, at least the ones I have come as a kit with the cataphracty stuff. That means that the cataphracties in here, the 10 of them, are going to be free game more than likely for my dark angles. Now, I do know that there are some forward roll dark heresy esque, or this dark, dark heresy, dark angel horse heresy esque stuff for Terminators and whatever else to further personalize it. But these are free game, meaning that these 10 will probably be for the first Legion in some capacity. The Occult Blaze is just an upgrade kit of the resin stuff you add to traditionally Mark IV, but you could add to Mark III or Mark VI, whatever, right? Any, any Mark II through VI, because seven is both heresy mark. So for that, I will make use of some of these Mark VI guys for that, just for variety. But the bulk of this box set, honestly, is probably going to be First Legion. Now, the First Legion plan, I already went over the 15th Legion's plan. The First Legion's plan is to dive headfirst into the Horus Heresy 2.0 building mindset. Building squads, maybe getting the extra squad stuff that's Dark Angel specific to go full on, no comprehensive rules for these guys in the post heresy sense uh, style of thing. Like, that, like, I'm building the Thousand Suns prayers and cozy style, keeping everything in mind for post heresy codex, but still that could fit into this mindset. This is the exact opposite for the First Legion. It's going to be completely diving into this, and then whatever I have, I'll make use if I want to play it in a post heresy game. So, that means that the bulk of the stuff is probably going First Legion only because while they do have a specific look to them and upgrade pieces and decals in which I have for both legions, the Thousand Suns are much more uh, look dependent than I'm going for and therefore I feel for me are much more limited on what I can use in there because I gotta put the occult blade stuff on top of that or I'm using specific set with terminators and so on. The Dreadnought in here, for example, I'm not gonna use this Dreadnought for my Thousand Suns. I do plan to get the Osiron pattern because it's so Thousand Suns dripping in goodness that I can't not. There are really cool Dark Angel uh, Dreadnoughts, I should say. Dark Angel Dreadnoughts too. But this one I could easily, you know, kit out with a whole bunch of post RC Dark Angel upgrade bits to really get Dark Angelified and be fine with. So it'll probably be Dark Angels as well. The biggest thing I'm not sure about is the Spartan tank. Do I want to run that? What was that? I'm dropping stuff and I don't even know it. Uh, the Spartan tank could easily go for either Legion. I'm not sure the route I want to go. The first Legion's concept is a heavy Dreadwing slash Firewing aspect stuff with, of course, Terminators and maybe even some bikes. Maybe, I'm not sure about that part. But uh, definitely heavy Dreadwing slash Firewing stuff, but with plenty of Terminator support too. Basically a whole bunch of blow it up, rip it apart, you know, as if it never existed concept. Spartan Tank would be very fitting for that. On the other hand, Running a Terminator heavy force that I'm going to be of the Thousand Suns, it could also benefit from the Spartans. So that I'm not sure with. I do have another pre heresy tank that can transport Terminators from Forge World sitting in storage somewhere. Well, not somewhere, I know where it's sitting. But um, that I think that I kind of got as a salvage deal. So I think I could build it and make it work. And if that's the case for the Thousand Suns, and this is of course thinking long, long term future because it's in storage and everything, right? But, um, then this will go first legion otherwise i'm still not sure but with that said the round thing off here we use this to make it easier to see i built this guy this guy is an interrogator chaplain dark angels post heresy 40k interrogator chaplain but i built them fully because i believe this is the extent of a model's pose and and, and busyness that i could do as a full build and still paint up otherwise i do it in um sub assemblies but Everything I see here, and as you're seeing, is Dark Angel iconography. Or things that don't necessarily, even this Crozius, don't necessarily scream post heresy only to me. I'm gonna get skulls, I'm gonna get skull, right? Um, Dark Angel symbol, keys, and everything else. So, as I see it, instead of painting this up as a post heresy chaplain, interrogator chaplain, I could do it as a first legion pre heresy. Chaplain, of which we do do the Dark Angels had some chaplains during this time. Um, the chaplaincy program kind of went through most of the legions at this time. Or as a Praetor, right? 
I just don't know if there's any type of weapon option combination that could represent this power fist Crozius, even if this runs as a power maul or something. Um, but instead of doing the dark angel symbol on that kind of stuff in white, I would do it in red to kind of reflect the pre-heresy style and everything. No green armor, all black, being a chaplain and being the first legions all black. I could do green on the robes, for example, or the cloak or whatever to kind of tie it in, make him be Caliban born, right? That's what the green was supposed to signify anyway. So that's the idea. I'm not sure. I think it would fit and be kind of fun. Share your thoughts on that. But that's just a glimpse into the box set and some plain rambling shenanigans um, for this box set and my pre-heresy collecting for the 1st and the 15th legions. Should be some fun, right? This is long-term goal stuff. This isn't happening overnight. I'm not gonna just suddenly dive in for hours a day and paint and build, not, none of that stuff. It's just long-term stuff of what this could eventually become outside of a pile of plastic shame, right? Anyways, thanks so much for tuning in and stopping by. Share your thoughts. If you purchased this box set, how did you like it? What did you build it as? And slash, or if you plan to purchase this box set, what are you gonna use it for? Anyways, Thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy.